Well, hello and welcome to our next video entitled Creating Responsive Layouts with Media Queries in Dreamweaver CC 2017. In this video, we get a taste of how Dreamweaver's capabilities can help us to take a website that might look great on a widescreen desktop monitor, but have some real layout challenges when we get to smaller devices where the screen width is not so big and we have, for example, maybe a complicated three column layout that just gets too jammed up and difficult to see the text and images that might be there in all of their glory on a larger screen. So Dreamweaver's Visual Media Queries is the feature that's going to help us to solve these problems by creating different layouts for different screen widths. So let's take a look at how that works. For example, here we're going to be dealing with in this video a very simple resume page here which lays out nicely on a wide screen. And you can see that there's a fairly wide left margin here and quite a lot of room on the right side as well. But as we begin to move this inward and what we're doing here is we are modeling what it might look like on different devices that don't have as much space width wise and you can see that there's a lot of word wrapping going on and it's fairly reasonably adjusting to the situation but it's beginning to get cramped and we're seeing that there's no change in the big left hand margin on the page and that's becoming real estate that we could really take advantage of which we in this case are not so as this gets thinner and thinner. Basically we're modeling screen widths on smaller devices, tablets, phones, and whatnot, where this is going to really not look very nice at all. What we'd like to be able to do is to react to those smaller screen widths, and this, this is what we're going to end up creating today in this video, is when this screen width begins to get a little cramped, it's going to adjust. I get, I'm going to get a little bit thinner and we're going to see it jump to the alternative layout. So what you see now, suddenly it jumps back to a situation where we're using almost all of the screen width and being able to display the text in a reasonable manner. So this is a graceful uh, fallback to the original layout here. So we're going to get to see how we can create this responsiveness using Dreamweaver's visual media queries. All right, and to do so, let's go to Dreamweaver. So we're going to launch Dreamweaver 2017 here. We're going to define our site. I'm going to call this EW Responsive Resume. And I'm going to browse to the local site folder. In my case, this is on the desktop. Select that root folder. Don't have any images to worry about setting up a folder for. So that takes care of our site definition. And we have two files only in this simple website, a resume and a style sheet. So first of all, I'm going to open up that resume. And you can see that is basically the same thing we were looking at in the browser earlier. This is the version where we have this wide margin, which works fine on this kind of a wide screen. No problem. Uh, but we saw that it doesn't work so well on smaller devices. And we also want to take in mind that a lot of these styles which are creating the layout are coming from this styles.css style sheet. And if we're going to react with a different layout, we're going to have to be familiar with the styles that are already in place so that we can tell how to modify them to make things look better. So the first thing I'm going to do is to go to styles.css and go to the code view for that. And let's take a look at some of the key style sheet code here. You can also do this via the CSS designer, but I think things can, might be even more clear here in code view, even though many of you may not be coders. First of all, let's take a look at the body and the margining, which is the key to the lack of responsiveness that we're currently seeing. And we see margin left of 350. So that's 350 pixels of useless real estate on the left-hand side that we're giving up here in order to basically assume we're on a wide screen and don't need. Now, notice that the left-hand headings were not really that far away, and that's because of the next style here. The H2, which are the resume headings along the left, they're actually not that far away because there's a technique here of negative margining of 150. 
So what that's doing is it's pulling the headings back towards the left, 150 pixels, so that the resultant margin there is really only 200. That's 350 minus 150 for 200. So all of the major text is 350 pixels away from the left edge, except for the headings, which is 200 pixels away from the left edge. Still a lot of wasted real estate, as we saw, when things get pretty tight. So these are the things that we're going to want to change when we get to smaller widths. It's the margin left of the body and the margin left of the H2s, or the resume headings along the left. If you were to instead go back to live view here, so we're talking about these H2s. You can see they're sitting right at 200 there. And then here's the body sitting at 350. So these guys are just pulled back to the left by that negative 150 margin. And if we look at the CSS designer for styles.css, and to do that, we're going to have to move this until we can really get a good wide look at it. And so what we're wanting to do here is to take a look at body. And there's that margin you can see there at 350 on the left and h2 minus 150 on the left we were just exploring that in code view now we're seeing it in the css designer okay so we know what we need to do is in both cases we need these to come back to the left further and so the body 350 is way too much so we're going to decrease that quite a bit and then the h2s we will not be bringing them back 150 pixels because we won't need to bring them that back that far. So the question is, how do we do this in a way that doesn't change how it currently looks at a wider screen, but kicks into play as the screen starts to get a little bit thinner and the problem starts to occur? First of all, we need to identify where is that magic point where the problem is starting to occur. We can use the scrubber to simulate in live view what the layout will look like as this, just like we did in the browser, except you can't really see all that clearly what width you're at. Here, the width is displaying clearly for us to see. So when we get to about here, around the 700 area, it's starting to get pretty crowded and it's starting to become painfully obvious that we're wasting all this real estate for no good reason. You could also say it's happening sooner. 768 is kind of a magic value because that's one of those areas where we start to see phones using that as a as a width. So it's probably convenient if if your issues are starting to happen in that area that you use that as your boundary. It's going to be a more meaningful place to start working on a better layout. So we have identified where we want that layout change to occur and we have identified some of the changes in CSS that we need to make. So it is time now for us to create a media query. That is something in CSS that will automatically kick in when it gets to that particular screen width and make our styles apply. To do that, we're going to, once we get the scrubber to the point at which we want these reactions to take place, and by the way, when I was talking about phones and such taking on certain screen widths, to see some of those, you can click on this area where you can set the screen. And you can see where iPads, iPhones of various uh, releases, and Google phones as well, and get an idea of what I'm talking about. And you can see many of them around the 600s, 700s, and so on. So that's kind of a magic area right now for a lot of uh, responsiveness to take place. So let's click on this plus sign. This is going to add a media query. When I click that, we get this little dialog box that was part of what you were seeing in the original screen for the video. And this is dialog box is an important one that we understand our choices. There are three different types of media queries that we can set up here. By default, I'm seeing max width, but there are two others, min width and min max. Let me describe the three so we know what we're doing here when we make this choice. Max width is going to be a green bar, and what it tells you is that any settings that you make in a max width type of media query will be affecting the page at this current width or less. In other words, this is the maximum width, 768, at which these will apply. After that, it's going to be whatever the page normally has. So that's exactly what we want here, because we want to set some specific styles that will affect the page at smaller sizes and then not affect it at larger ones because we already have settings that work well there. Now the opposite will happen in min width. In min width, this is the starting point for where 
it will begin to affect the page as it gets larger. So 768 would be the minimum width that we would see a change, and then anything bigger would be affected. And then there's the min-max, which we don't use too often, but that's a blue one. Green, purple, and blue are just Dreamweaver's visual aids, so you know what you're dealing with. And this one is where you will set a min and a max, and the styles would only apply in that little range and not less or greater than. So clearly we want max width here, and the max width that we want, we can set, if you haven't got it set properly already, you can type in 768, that's the key for our changes. And then you have a choice because you're going to be putting in some styles that are going to affect the page, and you're either going to create a new style sheet for that, you're going to define the styles within the page itself, which I don't recommend, and then lastly, if you have an available style sheet you want to use, you can also choose that. And that's what we're going to do here. We already have styles.css in place, and it's not a very big style sheet as it is, so it's perfectly normal to put the style sheet that we already are working with as the target for these new styles. And click OK. All right, now you notice that the media query kicks into place 768 and has a look similar to other media queries we've seen in previous videos that we're doing some bootstrapping and getting visual media queries by default built in already. So now we're building our own at 768 max width and now we can begin to create those styles. So if we come over to now the CSS designer you can see in styles.css that we have global styles and then we have styles that are part of this max width 768. So let's choose that by clicking on it and you notice we can't see our existing selectors that we had in this style sheet before because now we're looking specifically at the max width styles of which we at this point don't have any so we're going to create some our main problem was with the h2s and the body styles so we're going to begin by going to the body i'm going to just click on the tag selector for body and then click the plus sign make sure that your max width 768 media query is selected there, a plus sign. We get the typical body P. We just want body, so I'm going to click in there and backspace out that P, and then hit enter on the body twice to, as necessary to lock that in. And then I'm going to turn off show set, which I had before when we were looking at the various already existing styles. And for the body, it is the left margin that concerns me. And remember that it was set at 350 before. Because we want this to be responsive, I'm actually going to use a percentage here rather than a pixel setting. And we'll see why visually later. I'm going to just type in 10%. Now, the reason why percents are a good idea, I'm going to hit enter to set that up, is because being a percentage, it will move. And the smaller the width of the page, the smaller this 10% will be. So it makes sense. And you can already see that it moved over to what would be a pretty reasonable margin for this width. However, what's the problem? Where's our H2s? Our H2s now are still taking on the old minus 150, and that puts them literally off the screen. So we obviously have to address that. Click on one of your H2s there, if you can find one that isn't disappeared off the page and click on the H2 there, and then making sure your media query is still selected. We'll do another plus sign. I'm getting body H2. I'm going to click the up arrow to just make that an H2. Hit enter there. We'll lock that in. And I'm going to go to the margin area for H2s now, and I'm going to go left margin again. I'm going to click in there. And remember before, we had minus 150. I still want a minus because I still want the heading to the left of the main text, but not nearly as much. And I don't want to use a pixel value because I've used a percentage for the body. So I want to use a minus percentage for these headings. I'm going to use minus 7%. That should bring them back fully visible. You're basically giving it a 3% margin because the body is 10 and these are minus seven, so that leaves three in this little space here on the left. So you can see how you're still getting a staggered indent, which is nice, and sets off those headings. I'm going to hit enter 
on that minus 7% setting. All right, and we can use the scrubber now to kind of see uh, how this is going to kick in. So here's the old styling, which is working fine at wider screens. And then as we get close to that 768 magic number, we're going to see it jump. Boom, there it jumps. And this is where we're getting our 10% and and 3%, if you will, or minus 7. And as we begin to crowd in on it, it still is, you see how it's moving to the left a little bit, the left edges of things? That's the percentage. Even at really tiny widths, it still is reasonable. I mean, it's as, as good as it can get. So these widths, being percentages, get smaller as the screen width gets smaller, get a little wider as the screen gets wider, and that's a nice responsive way of handling the text that we have. Now the situation is a lot more complicated with a three column layout with all kinds of images and more difficult complex layouts, but we're seeing the basics of how to deal with it, how to set up the visual media query, how to set some new styles on that that handle at least some of the challenges that you might encounter. All right, let's see this site in the browser because that is the ultimate test. We'll go ahead and save what's been modified. We see that the site looks as it normally did before. And now let's go ahead and see what the reaction is. There it is. This is the 768 magic spot there. Starting to get cramped and then jumps to a nicer result and stays there for the remainder of what shrinking might occur. All right, back to Dreamweaver. And that pretty much concludes what we wanted to accomplish in this video, which was, again, just to basically set up a media query at a point where a challenging layout problem was beginning to occur and to take evasive action by setting up some CSS that works well for screen sizes smaller than that issue by setting up a max width media query and setting some appropriate CSS to handle that more gracefully. So I hope that made sense as a basic usage of media queries to get a responsive design that works well at different screen widths. Thank you for watching.